Right now on News 10 this morning, an all-nighter in the courtroom as jurors trying to reach a verdict in a capital murder trial. And we finally get a look at the GOP tax reform plan, and it looks like it'll be an uphill battle. And the opioid crisis and the impact it's having on Central Texas treatment facilities coming up on News 10 this morning. From the most watched station in Central Texas, this is KWTX News 10. 6 a.m. on Friday morning. I'm Pete Souza. Thanks for starting your day with us. I'm Tanya Maya. We're all excited. It is Friday and that there's going to be beautiful weather this weekend. Brady? Yeah, if you don't mind it being a little warm for November standards. I mean, uh, it's still yeah, not, not bad weather, but we're still in the 80s for highs mm -hmm. here over the next few days. A little cooler today. Let's show you what's going on getting out the door this morning. Temperature still mild and muggy. Uh, we do have a front, though, that is sitting across our northwestern counties. We'll talk about that in your full forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you very much, Brady. All right, let's get right to some breaking news this morning. A silver traffic alert is in effect right now for a North Texas man believed to be in our area. The Irving Police Department is searching for William Franks Jr. He's an 83-year-old man, about 6 feet to 185 pounds. He's diagnosed with a cognitive impairment, and police believe he poses a threat to his own safety. Again, this is a silver alert. He was last seen driving around 3 p.m. in a gray 2013 Honda Civic with Texas license plates. Now, the license plate is BZP9240. The vehicle has damage to the rear driver's side. If you have any information, call Irving Police at 972-273-1010. Also breaking this morning, after hours of deliberation, a jury has handed down a guilty verdict in a Coryell County capital murder trial. Jurors deliberated into the early morning hours before finding 23-year-old Tadarius Davis guilty of capital murder. He's sentenced to life in prison without parole. 23-year-old Terrence Daniel Jr. was found guilty of murder and will face sentencing on Monday. Daniel and Davis were accused of shooting Thomas Smethers to death in his truck outside of the Copper's Cove Walmart in October of 2015. Police say it was a drug deal gone bad. A North Texas mother is accused of murdering her own daughters. 29-year-old Sarah Henderson is being held in the Athens County Jail. Deputies showed up to a home Wednesday night after a 911 call about a possibly suicidal woman. When they got there, a man and woman told them there were no problems. But about three hours later, a 911 caller said that a woman had shot her children. The sheriff says five and seven-year-old girls were found dead at the scene. Their bodies have been taken to Dallas about an hour and 15 minutes away for an autopsy. Now back in central Texas, things are expected to be back to normal at Whitney High School today. This after a scare kept more than half the students at home on Wednesday. If you remember, on Monday, someone found a note in the boys' restroom that said, I'm going to shoot up the school on Wednesday. Now, the district says two Whitney Middle School students were detained in connection with what is described as a threatening copycat note. President Donald Trump is taking on the opioid crisis. Local treatment centers are actually noticing an impact of this national public health emergency. News 10's Kathleen Suri joins us now with their reaction to the president's declaration. Even though the president's announcement isn't changing much for the day-to-day -day operations here at the Senecor Foundation Treatment Center in Colleen, experts say it's all about bringing awareness to this issue that's been going on for a long time. Now, Nick Vache with the Senecor Foundation says in Central Texas, they've been noticing about a 20% increase in opioid patients in the last eight months or so. Since the president's announcement, they've been noticing a 10 to 15% increase in calls for people wanting to know more about opioid treatment and addiction and overall about 15 to 20 percent of people admitted to their outpatient program list opioids as their primary drug of choice. Now Vashay says most people start using common prescription opioids like Oxycontin or Vicodin after an injury. But because the drug produces euphoric or happy feelings, many people become addicted and start finding illegal ways to get the drug to avoid those harsh withdrawal symptoms. It's a problem that claimed more than 64,000 lives in 2016 alone. Based on the number of overdose deaths that are happening in the United States, it's basically like 9-11 happening every three weeks as far as the number that are people that are dying from overdoses. Mm -hmm. So anytime somebody like the president can get up and say this is a significant problem, we have to dedicate resources to it, um, is going to have an impact. And Vashay says the longer people wait to get treatment for their opioid addiction, the harder it can be on the road to the recovery. And coming up at 630, we're going to hear more about how this crisis is having an impact on Central Texas hospitals and emergency rooms. Reporting live from Clean, Kathleen Suri, KWTX News 10. 
A showdown is brewing on Capitol Hill over the Republicans' new tax overhaul bill. Under the new plan, the middle class will see the biggest benefits. The bill slashes a number of individual tax brackets from seven down to four. And the top rate applies only to households making a million dollars or more. The tax rate for families making $60,000 a year would drop from 15 percent to 12. President Trump praised the plan on Fox News last night. Tax cuts, if we get this through, and I think we will, you're going to see this economy take off like a rocket ship. Democrats insist eliminating a deduction for state and local income taxes hurts middle class families in high tax states. The plan also eliminates deductions for student loans and medical expenses while raising the child's credit tax. The president wants this bill approved before Christmas, but Republicans already oppose it. Twitter took a breath from the president, a break from the president last night. President Trump's personal account disappeared for 11 minutes with an error message saying the page, quote, doesn't exist. Twitter said the president's account was deactivated by a customer service employee on their last day. 606 is, 606 is on the clock. Nobody's sick around here. It's Friday. We're all feeling pretty good. Still to come on News 10 this morning, tis the season for Oprah's favorite things. We'll tell you where you can find her annual gift list. And the day is finally here. Find out why people are going crazy over the new iPhone 10. And we got a cold front that's going to work into central Texas today. Not all of us will feel the effects, but uh, temperatures a little cooler. But the cool down doesn't last all that long. We'll talk about the warm weekend ahead right after this.